Happy Friday. Come on in, pull up a chair. The Daily Dope is in the air. Howdy, 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 gang. Yes, I'm Jeff McAleer, back once again as your host here at The Daily Dope, presented by TheGamingGang.com, of which I am the founder and editor-in-chief and jack-of-all-trades, master of none. So, yes, once again, I am still under the weather here. I still have this damn sinus thing. It seems to be getting worse. I think, uh, I, think I actually got a little dose of con crud from Gen Con that just hopped on the back of my con crud from San Diego Comic-Con. Dunno, but uh, yeah, my voice is kind of shot still and everything else, but hey, you know what? We are going to soldier on because tonight is Friday, August 9th. This is episode 200, I shouldn't say 200, 300 and 41 of The Daily Dope. And uh, tonight I am going to un- be unboxing and taking a first look at the Pearl Brook expansion for Everdell from Starling Games. Plus, we will also take a peek at the wooden Evertree for Everdell that uh, that is available as well as a replacement for the uh, cardboard tree that comes with the main game. So, do want to mention this is a live show, very very casual this is the first time you're popping in to visit it's not brain surgery just hanging back got some people in chat we have a good time talking about tabletop games usually I'll do a game unboxing maybe I do a review we might even be taking a look at uh, some role-playing games from time to time which is usually on Thursdays and war games on Wednesdays so it is not rocket science as I like to say as well since this is a live stream There is chat available, and folks are already popping up in chat. So, do you want to point out, chat is not on screen. It's one of the ways that I avoid some of the stranger commenters, try to keep them at bay. But I do pay attention to chat. So, if you want to say howdy, or maybe you've got a question, or maybe there's something about Pearl Brook you'd like to get a closer look at, by all means, chime in, and I will respond. So we've got Exolera X1, as I like to say, X1, has joined us. Flaming Huron is over here uh, in chat. Yes, uh, yes, I'm trying to get out from under this weather, but uh, we'll see what uh, what's going on. I, You know, it's funny, because I was taking some Claritin before when I had the sinuses going, because that's what I, the con crud I always get, is always in my sinuses. Nothing else, never get anything else. Um... So I took some Claritin, and it was like, boom, and it was clearing it up. And now I take it, and it does nothing. In fact, it kind of almost has the opposite effect. It's as if it's like turning a faucet on in my sinuses. The Madman has arrived in chat as well. Good to see you, Madman. Your gift pack is going out this weekend, just so you know. So do want to point out, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you check out some of the videos on the Gaming Gang channel and you like them, By all means, please subscribe. If you do subscribe, don't forget, ring that little bell because not only will it tell you when there's a new video been uploaded, and I do upload videos that are not the Daily Dope, but it also tells you when the stream goes live within about five minutes. So tell a friend too. In fact, tell two friends because got another contest cooking right now. It's going on right now. I still have not had time to shoot a video. I will over the weekend. But if you checked out my review of the Pathfinder 2nd Edition Core Rulebook, as well as the Bestiary, (laughs) you know that I really, really dug both of these. I gave them 9.5s out of 10s. That's how much I really, really enjoyed both these books. So what I'm doing is I am going to put together a prize package once again. It is Paizo related. So it's going to be the core book, the bestiary or bestiary, whichever way you want to pronounce it, as well as the standalone adventure. Now, yesterday I was saying it was um, 
I was going to do the first story arc, first adventure path release for the uh, Age of Ashes, which I want to say is um, Hell Knight Hill. But then I saw there's also like a full-fledged adventure, a standalone adventure, um, something Plague Bear or something, the fall of the Plague Bear. I am going to include that instead. So it'll be the core rulebook, the bestiary, plus it's also going to include the standalone adventure as an introduction to second edition Pathfinder. These will all be in PDF. And for every 75 subscribers I get beyond 1,600, I will give out one prize pack to a subscriber. And that's it. You don't have to do anything. You don't even have to comment on videos. Just going to give it away. Uh, I did mention that uh, I would maybe have a contest to announce tonight on top of that. I still don't have the official word yet. So I should have that sometime early, early next week. Probably no later than Tuesday. So I see Viper Dave has arrived. Good to see you, Viper Dave. Good to have you pop in before the show's ending. Viper Dave has a habit of popping in and it's like, all right, well, that's it for tonight's show. Hey, Viper Dave. <laughs> so, <coughs> so, so uh, X1 says, yeah, sounds like an awesome prize. It will be. It will be an awesome prize. So, uh, so uh, X1 is telling me to take Allegra D. I can't take anything that has a, has a D at the end of it because of the medications I take for the old ticker. So don't forget, it ha wasn't that long ago. Well, granted, it's more than a year, but a year and a half now since I had a near-fatal heart attack. So uh, some things I can't take, so I have to be very, very careful. But uh, any, uh, like, decongestion, stuff like that that ended in a D, I cannot take. It'll raise my heart rate too high. So Bones is popping in too. I see Bones is here in chat as well. All right, so I've got some tabletop gaming news tonight. Not a ton, not a bunch, but I do have uh, four news pieces. They're all pretty interesting. So we're going to jump on into that. Do want to point out, I know there are some folks out there who just do not like the tabletop gaming news, and I, that's fine. That's okay. If you are one of those people and you're watching after the fact... Take a look at the show notes below and you will see the timestamps. You can skip right on into the unboxing. Uh, but if you are writing live with me, you're here for the ride. You're here for the ride with <laughs> Tabletop Gaming News. So first off, Rio Grande, or as some people like to pronounce it, Rio Grande, but it is Rio Grande, will be releasing a deluxe edition of the classic Puerto Rico. And I've got the dope. A new deluxe edition of the classic game Puerto Rico, which I just said, is now available. Well, it's not available yet. It will soon be available for the first time, the deluxe edition, that is. It's a fresh new look at this top-selling title. This deluxe edition includes the Puerto Rico base game, the new buildings expansion, and the nobles expansion. It features new cover artwork as well as artwork inside as well as dual-sided buildings with alternate artwork. In Puerto Rico, players assume the roles of colonial governors on the island of Puerto Rico. The aim of the game is to amass victory points by shipping goods to Europe or by constructing buildings. Each player uses a separate small board with spaces for city buildings, plantations, and resources. Shared between the players are three ships, a trading house, and a supply of resources and doubloons. Yes. Which roles will you play in the new world? Prospector, captain, mayor, trader, settler, craftsman, or builder? Will you own the most prosperous plantations? Will you build the most valuable buildings? You have but one goal. Achieve the greatest prosperity and highest respect by earning the most victory points. The deluxe edition of Puerto Rico is for two to five players, ages 13 and up. Plays in 90 to 150 minutes. And it will carry an MSRP of 40, I should say, 54, duh, 54 dollars and 95 cents when it arrives in a couple of weeks, less than two weeks actually. It arrives on August 20th. So pretty sweet. Piper Dave says, yeah, Friday night watching YouTube. Life can't get any better. I don't know. Could be watching the boys. If you watch the boys on Amazon, I don't know if anybody out there got a chance to, to watch that yet. I really liked it. I thought it was, I mean, there are a couple of parts where I thought it was pushing it a little bit, but uh, 
thought it was excellent. Amazon just, uh, I think it was today, said that The Boys is uh, one of its most viewed shows ever. So it's right up there with um, Man in the High Castle. So uh, I got to be honest with Puerto Rico. I've never played it. I know. I've never played Puerto Rico. How about that? And it's like in the top five on Board Game Geek. I think forever it's been in the top five. So I might consider taking a look at this uh, deluxe edition. All right. So those of you who enjoy family games, there's a new family-friendly game on the horizon from Pandasaurus Games. And I've got the dope on Wayfinders. Engines purring goggles down. The seaplane is set for takeoff. Welcome to the whimsical world of Wayfinders, in which intrepid explorers race to chart new paths through the skies. You'll need to think on your feet and outfit your planes with the right gear to arrive safely. But building hangars on islands and stocking them with parts can help you zip around with ease. Be sure to be keen in your planning and you will unlock the charms of the islands. Wheels up, adventure awaits. Featuring colorful 3D molded airplane and hangar tokens, Wayfinders is sure to be a game night mainstay for families and gamers alike. Wayfinders is for two to four players ages 10 and up, plays in around 30 to 40 minutes, and will carry an MSRP of $39.95 when it arrives on October 30th. This looks kind of interesting. I wish I had more info about the gameplay. Pandasaurus is one of those companies that doesn't like to reveal a lot of information about the gameplay of it of its games, which I don't know. It doesn't make sense because don't they do uh, what is is it Dinosaur Island? That's like a big hit. I don't know. So Flaming Heron says, "Yep, watch the boys already. That's my nighttime show for my <laughs> for my time." I like your show because it's my early morning show for me. So uh, obviously, I would take a guess. Flaming Huron is not in North America. That's just my guess. Seeing that this is a morning show. Hey, it's like a morning zoo. Not really. So there is another classic Dungeons & Dragons module that's going to be getting the Goodman Games treatment. And I've got the dope. At Gen Con 2019, Goodman Games announced their next release in the Original Adventures Reincarnated line, and it is The Lost City. As with previously previous releases, I should say, in the OAR series, this one will include scans of the original basic iterations, a conversion of 5e, and new 5e material filling in some gaps from the original module. Written by Tom Moldvay, it was first published by TSR in 1982, which would have been my sophomore year of high school, and was designed as a standalone adventure for use with the Dungeons & Dragons basic set. The working title for the module was The Lost City of Synodekia. Good thing they just went with The Lost City. Moldvay designed the module as a low-level scenario to give novice dungeon masters experience in fleshing out adventures such that the original version is only partially complete. It is both well-known and an enduring favorite for those who played it during its heyday. The 5e conversion is consistent with the original design principles and it also offers new avenues for exploration. The plot involves the player characters discovering a ruined subterranean city slowly rising out of the sands. The adventure is set inside a huge step pyramid with the lower pyramid only sketched out and the city itself described with a list of the major areas and a map. The adventure's main villain is Zargon. Why are we telling people about the villain right off the bat? Jeez, spoilers. A giant one-eyed monster and his minions. The entire double pyramid, not including the city, contains over 100 rooms. The OAR volume will presumably also include complete scans of the original publication, as with other uh, releases in the OAR line. This is good news, because uh, if you've got an old beat-up copy of Lost City, 
in your collection, you'll now have a fresh copy that you could use instead of uh, using the original. As of now, OAR4, The Lost City, is slated for a 2020 release. And no price has been released yet, no pricing information. But normally, the original Adventures Reincarnated line, uh, they retail for $49.99. So, uh, I, I am interested in seeing this. Now, there is OAR3 is coming out at the end of the year. And if I remember right, I think it's S3, which I can't remember exactly what S3 was. I know somebody in chat, maybe the Madman, because the Madman's saying that they, <laughs> he's got the original module. Um, I have a PDF of it. So I have a PDF of the original. So uh, I, uh, I never ran the Lost City. I never uh, have played the Lost City. I, I've read it, obviously, enough. Uh, because, like I said, I've got it. I've read so many adventure modules over the years. I can't even... I've lost count. I, there's got to be well over a thousand. So, uh, because I'm one of these game masters who, like, steals stuff from other... <laughs> steal ideas from other stuff and throw it all together. So, uh, I am excited. I like to see this stuff. Granted, yeah, you know, it's porting over to 5e. And with Goodman Games adding new material, it's going to change things up a bit from the original, which some people might not be too keen on. I'm okay with it, especially since you're already going to get a copy of the original, a scan of the original. So, I don't think that's big, that big a deal. My final news piece if you're a fan of the Blades in the Dark role-playing game, then you might be interested in checking out some military-based fantasy role-playing with Band of Blades from Evil Hat Productions and Off Guard Games. The Road to Sky Dagger Keep. Here's the dope. The Legion is in retreat following a failed battle against the armies of the undead. You're a member of the Legion. Your bonds to one another forged in the dark by bone and blood. But time is running out as more fall to the indomitable forces of the Cinder King. As legionnaires, you must make it to Sky Dagger Keep before you're cut off or overtaken by the undead. Paying horrifying costs, you'll employ offensive maneuvers, unwise bargains, and desperate gambits as the ever-ticking clock nears its final hour. Do you have what it takes to outwit, outrun, and outlast the endless hordes of the undead? I doubt it. Or will your band of blades break beneath the Cinder King's iron fist? Play to find out in Band of Blades, a standalone Forge in the Dark RPG of dark military fantasy. Band of Blades contains all the rules you need to play. In this book, you will find a clear game structure for playing out missions filled with moment-to-moment -moment danger and tracking the overall fate of the Legion. Rookie, Soldier, and five different specialist playbooks with Legionnaires created as are needed when the casualties of war set in. Legion rolls for all the players. The commander sets mission priorities. The marshal directs the troops. The quartermaster manages precious resources. The spymaster gathers intel in the field. And the lore keeper preserves the histories of the Legion. Three playable chosen. Humans imbued with the powers of the gods, each with their own unique gifts. Army advancement throughout the campaign, including gaining new material and the promotion of the Legion's troops. Four distinct heritages of brave and flawed people seeking to survive another night of the Cinder King's horrors. Join us on the road to Sky Dagger Keep. Our numbers are few, our supplies are low, and every operation is a deadly risk. But if any chance exists to make a difference in the outcome of the war, it's this cohort, the only, only remaining hope this bloody band of blades. You can score the 464 page hardcover release from Evil Hat for an MSRP of $45, which will include the PDF. Or you can snag the PDF alone from Drive Through RPG for $20. That is kind of a steal. $20 for a 464 page PDF? Yowza! Sounds pretty interesting, too, especially if you dig, uh, like, military fantasy novels, uh, different series, like, uh, like The Black Company is one that comes directly to mind. 
The Madman says S3 was Expedition to the Barrier Peaks. I knew, I knew the Madman would have it. I knew it. All right, give me a sec, guys. I gotta uh, blow my nose here. <laughs> Just soldiering on. So, anyway, uh, yeah, that does sound kind of cool. Um, and uh, Band of Blades is based on Blades in the Dark. I think it utilizes uh, some of the same systems. So, on one hand, it sounds really cool, but then on the other hand, it does sound like it's kind of self contained. Just be one campaign done. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I would like to take a peek at it. I'd be, uh, I'd be pretty interested in checking it out uh flaming here it says sounds like how i run games too and it sounds good because i never got into dnd until after 3.5 besides playing old computer games using earlier editions yes the old gold box i remember those and bones yeah there you go bones i need a doctor man come on what's up what's up it's like i'm just i'm what do I look like? I'm just a chatter. I'm not a doctor. Come on. All right. So what is coming up on the show next week? First off, on Monday, I will be unboxing and taking a first look at Roll for Adventure. Yes, fate lies in your hands, or at least in your dice. This was one of the three big Cosmos Gen Con releases, so we are going to take a peek at that on Monday's show. Tuesday show. We're going to unbox and take a first look at Run, Fight, or Die Reloaded from Gray Fox Games. This is a much bigger box than the original Run, Fight, or Die. I understand that this has been kind of streamlined. Uh, there have been some changes to the gameplay. So I'm interested in checking that out. I have played the original Run, Fight, or Die. And uh, it's kind of a fun little kind of push your luck, chuck and dice game. The one thing that I found kind of strange was um, that... Uh, you can have like tons and tons of zombies sitting in your zones and uh, we would run out of zombies. So kind of strange. Anyway, move right along. Then we've got War of the Worlds. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. On War Game Wednesday, I will review War of the Worlds, the East Coast edition from Dan Verson Games. It is jam-packed with Martian busting action. It's a really cool solitaire game. And I see Casey Board Gamers is popping in. Good to see you, Casey. Then Thursday, because I love looking at RPGs on Thursdays. This is probably going to be a pretty, pretty big show. I will be uh, unboxing and paging through both the Agent's Handbook and the Handler's Guide to Delta Green. Dun, 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 from Arc Dream Publishing. Uh, I interviewed Shane Ivey and uh, Dennis Zettweiler at uh, Gen Con. Good, good interview. You should check it out if you haven't seen it yet. So that will be on Thursday. And then on Friday, I will be unboxing and taking a first look at Tribes, Dawn of Humanity. And this is the second of the three big Cosmos Gen Con releases. So we will be taking a peek at that. Over the weekend, I'm probably going to shoot a standalone for the duel. Imhotep the duel. This was the third Cosmos release. Uh, I might even shoot a standalone for Penny Lane, which is from Sparkworks. So this, uh, this looks like kind of an interesting little game. So uh, Brennan Noonan from Tabletop Tycoon uh, gave, me, uh, gave me this to check out. So, Casey Board Gamer says, got a chance to play Run, Fight, or Die with Richard at the first Dice Tower Con when it was a prototype. Yeah, it's fun. It's a fun game. Uh, one thing I do want to point out uh, before I jump into the unboxing of Pearl Brook and we take a look at the uh, wooden Evertree, uh, as far as commenting on videos on the Gaming Yank channel, it is considered poor form. To comment on a video on someone's channel talking about how people should go visit another channel or watch a video on another channel. Just pointing that out, folks. 
um, because someone in chat did that, and I deleted the comment because that is that's a no-no. That that's you're not supposed to do that. That's it's like if you were watching a Twitch stream, and somebody pops into chat and they say, "Hey, go check out this other Twitch stream." <laughs> it's like, no, 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 no. That that does not go over. All right. Anyway, so. I will jump on into the unboxing in just a second, but do want to point out, once again, the gaming gang and thus the Daily Dope are pretty much not-for-profit endeavors here. So if you like the website, if you like the channel, if you like this show, please consider making a small donation to Lil Bub's Big Fund and the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. Yes, Lil Bub's Big Fund does provide grant monies to organizations here in the United States who are caring for special needs animals who are awaiting adoption. They're awaiting to find their forever homes. These pets might require daily medications. They might be blind. They might be deaf. Might have mobility issues. They might have, say for an example, feline leukemia. Uh, Or they might just be long in the tooth like yours truly. But still, those, uh, those pets, those animals, they deserve love just like any other animal out there. So, that's what uh, Lil Bub's Big fun does. So, like I said, please consider making a small donation. If you do, shoot me an email. My email address is right down there, Jeff McAleer at thegaminggang.com. And if you do so, uh, if you like, I'm more than happy to give you a shout out on the following show. So there you have it. All right. Uh, let's see. So Flaming Heron says, wow, why would you do that? To me, that's almost as bad as saying, oh, this other person's reviews or videos suck on someone else's videos. I'm just tossing it out there. I'm just mentioning it because, um, you know, I don't, I, I usually do not delete comments, uh, unless it's some, something completely asinine. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not even going to deal with this delete. Um, but yeah, it's just, yeah, it's, that's just considered poor form. You don't go on somebody's channel, comment on their video and say, oh, Hey, you should be watching this show. And then have, like, you know, have a link. It's just, you know, just not done. Anyway, but that's no big deal. Yeah, like I said, I'm just mentioning it. It's not like I was pissed off. I just was like, some people don't realize that. You know, some people don't know. Uh, I mean, it's possible that the person commenting was like, hey, Jeff, you should check out this video or this show or whatever. Which uh, the reality is I never do that. I don't watch other reviewers or, or anything like that. I don't have time to. I really don't. It's got nothing to do with them. It's got to do with me and how many hours there are in the day. (laughs) Moving right along, because I know a lot of people are really interested to find out what exactly is in Pearlbrook for Everdell, the first expansion for Everdell. It's from Starling Games. It's designed by James A. Wilson with artwork and graphic design provided by Andrew Bosley and Dan May. Wow, names that I can actually pronounce. How about that? The core game, and of course the game with the expansion, is for one to four players, ages 13 and up, plays in 40 to 80 minutes, and the expansion does carry an MSRP of $50. I will point out, I have seen this as low as 30, about 36, as far as uh, online retailers. If that's important to you, don't get mad that I mentioned that you can buy something online. I'm not telling you to not go to your friendly local game store. I'm just pointing out, you can find it for about 36 bucks online. Now, as far as uh, the wooden ever tree, which is what we're gonna look at first. So let's move on over to the other camera. I've got the ever tree here. Move uh, Pearlbrook out of the way. Uh, This was a Kickstarter, like add on that you could get. I am not positive what uh, what this retails for. I think, I'm not sure, I think this is $20. So, let's see, where is that? It's up front. So, as I mentioned before, uh, and of course, if you follow the gaming gang or you watch the Daily Dope, you already know that my favorite board game of last year was Everdell. And the only knock 
I had on Everdell really was the tree. Was the cardboard tree. And uh, I should have grabbed the one I've got and put it out here to show you what the problem was. But what happens is if you put the tree together, I mean, the tree looks great when you put it together. In fact, we could just put it together right now. Let's do that. Yeah, let's, let's actually turn it the right way, huh, Jeff? Uh, and it's funny because the tree really gives this game a very, very cool table presence. Even without the tree, it would still have a really nice table presence. But the tree just really kind of... All right, come on, you. What's going on now? Okay, so we got this. And we're going to slide this on in. This is where it gets a little tricky here. So... Uh, as an example, with the cardboard one, cardboard tree, you have to kind of be careful when you're putting this together. Otherwise, you're going to like kind of tear it, tear away at this like up top here. So you got to be careful. So easy peasy. Look at this. Look how easy this is to put together as I, as I get stuck trying to put this on. You got to kind of slide it around like that. Boom. There we go. So, uh, like I said, this has a really cool table presence when you're playing. So what happened is if you have just the cardboard, you run into kind of a, a quandary. So what are you going to do? Are you going to take it apart and, and, and put it back together every time you play? Because... That's going to put some wear, real wear and tear on this, on this uh, Evertree. Hey, and William McGinnis is popping in. Good to see you, William. Thanks for joining us in chat. So anyway, so you've got that, that option of taking it apart, putting it together, taking it apart, putting it together. And eventually, you're going you're gonna to be wearing out these little areas like here, up here. Or you can leave it put together all the time which is what I did, and then it got knocked over, one of the cats, it was my cat, it was Smokey did it, knocked it over, and the cardboard, the way the cardboard's made, if it breaks, it doesn't just bend, it actually breaks. So it's uh, it just kind of flaps around. So like this piece here kind of broke, so it just kind of flaps around. So I am very, very happy that Brenna Noonan, Noonan gosh, see, I'm telling you, with the sinuses, it's like impossible to talk. <laughs> anyway, Brennan Noonan from Tabletop Tycoon was kind enough to give me one of these wooden trees. So, very cool. Like I said, I think, if I remember correctly, she mentioned that it was... Uh, I think she said it was $20. I'm going to put this off to the side here. And I will actually leave that just assembled. And I will put it someplace safe that uh, Smokey can't get to it. All right, so let's take a peek at Pearl Brook. So what this is supposed to do, this is supposed to add a new sideboard to Everdell. It gives us like a new frog ambassador that we send to the river. To, uh, to recruit uh, new new characters, new animals, uh, new buildings. And there's a new resource, pearls. So it says, uh, deep below the shimmering surface of the Pearl Brook River, a mysterious civilization of water folk is waiting. And the war begins. Nah, I'm just kidding. I'm joking. Uh, love the artwork to Everdell too, and of course I understand we're probably going to see that same art style, which which we really enjoyed. Uh, I busted this out for Elliot Miller, my best friend over at VoiceofE.com, who I don't know, maybe one of these days he'll review something again over there. But uh, we had played it; he really enjoyed it. And then uh, I featured Everdell during our Extra Life marathon we did last November. So let's open this on up. Come on, you. Let's go. All right. So I guess I can I can kind of 
tell you what the contest might be that I'm trying to put together next week. Uh, so the contest would be, and it's for Twitter followers. It won't be for YouTube followers. But if I can pull it off, I will have a contest. I will be giving away uh, not only a copy of Pearl Brook, but also the wooden ever tree. So, like I said, I won't know until Tuesday at the latest. All right, so so hopefully that's uh, that's a pretty cool contest to go along with my Pathfinder 2nd Edition contest. So, it says, oh, this is the collector's edition. I always like when we got, like, box tops where they do something with it, even though it's just kind of, yeah, it just looks like water. At least it's not just plain old white. So this is the collector's edition. I am not sure what goes in the collector's edition. So we've got some wonders. We've got new wonders. So it's showing us how to put the wonders together. It's like these are some of the wonders here. Got some open. Not sure what those will be. We'll take a look at the rules in just a second. So we've got some new three-dimensional items to pop out there. So that's kind of cool. Because really, the ever tree is the only thing that really, you know, sticks out. Uh, although the artwork and the board and everything, uh, I got to be honest, we usually don't even play with the with the tree, just because uh, it's it, we don't need to have the tree. We know what the tree does. We know spring, summer, fall. We know what we get. So, ah ha! Here's the new sideboard. There we go. That's cool. I like that. We got a little dock here. Got uh, some areas. Uh, these must be the areas where we drop off our little frog ambassador. Then we got a shoal. And then we've got Starfall's Flame. Oh, here's the wonders. So we got Starfall's Flame, Starblaze Bridge. Hope Watch Gate, Ms. Rye's Fountain. Oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Rye's Fountain. No, it's Ms. Rye's Fountain. What? <laughs> yep, now I can't read. Can't speak, can't read. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. Hey, Dan from No Enemies here is, is popping in. After 7.30 Central Time, the madness. <laughs> so William McGinnis says, howdy, Dan. Did you bring some Glenn Livet? Oh, well, well, he's drinking some scotch. He's drinking some 12-year-old scotch. That's good stuff. So, uh, yeah, Dan, you can just pour me a nice glass of, uh, I'll take some Johnny Walker Blue if you got that. I'll just take a little, not, not a lot. I'm not I'm not a huge scotch drinker, but I, I, I can handle some Johnny Walker Blue. So we got uh, some decks here. Uh, oh, I should ask, now that Dan has popped in here, uh, how did the uh, arm wrestling go? What happened with the arm wrestling? So we got some cards. We got some new tokens. We got some new workers. We got a scorecard. We got a plastic insert to hold all this stuff. Huh, okay. Well, let's start zooming in after we take a look at the rule book here. So... Let's, yeah, might as well zoom in on the rule book. Yeah, once again, I'm telling you, I gotta I have to see if I can adjust this camera somehow. Because once I got back from Gen Con, it's like the zoom is just too you know, too much. It's like I just tap it a little bit, and it's like <laughs> it's like cut it out. So, uh, <laughs> so Dan says the purse was not worth his time. There you go. Well, he was taking on, uh, he was taking on the player's aid. So we got a score pad. So that's kind of cool. Although I got to be honest, when I get games with score pads, I never use a score pad. I just use scratch paper. So, uh, so Dan says he threw in the towel. Yep. Dan's a lover, not a fighter. That's how it works, right? So we got an overview. So talking about the contents, we got the river board and two board overlays. Okay, so those actually go on top of that board where we had the wonders. 
So we got the we got nine frog ambassadors, one for each color, four new sets of workers. <coughs> I wonder if this is what's part of the uh, the collector's edition here, because we have platypi, ex exolitis. I'm not sure what those are. Otters and starlings. Hey, well, it's from Starling Games. Why not have Starling, right? We've got four 3D wonders, 22 mini cards, three point tokens. Those are the pearls, six signs, 32 cards, and the score pad. So we're talking about the setup. So as you can see, this is the original board for Everdell. So this, this is going to go alongside it. So the road kind of connects to it. So showing the setup, talking about the river. We've got the destinations. Adornments, wonders, pearls, then solo rules. So not, not a whole ton of additional rules to have to learn. We've just got new, uh, new destinations. We've got new cards. Uh, adornments. So that's new. So adornments are something new as well. Wonders, obviously, are new also. So and it says uh, pearls are worth two points, two victory points at the end of the game. Sweet. Kabuki Kid has popped in. Good to see you, Kabuki Kid. So there we have the, uh, the very short rules. We've got our Starling Games catalog. What do we got here? Let's see. Uh, Alien Frontiers, don't have that. Archmage, enjoyed that. Got that. Black Orchestra, enjoyed that. Got that. Everdell, we've all we've been talking about that. King's Forge, I do not have that. Nothing personal. The, I think these are coming out. Shadow Rift, that's that's actually a pretty interesting game. I reviewed that not too long ago. Uh, but yeah, nothing personal. That's Tom Vassell's game. That's uh, getting a new print run, new edition. Okay, so let's take a look at some of this stuff here. So let's. Let's take a look at some of these new tokens that we've got. So these are otters. These guys are little otters. So these are new workers. There we go. So we got little otters. We've got the, yeah, you know, what? it's got to be a misprint where it was saying nine frog ambassadors because it said one for each color. Well, there's only four players. So, oh wait, no, I see him. That's right, because we got four new, <coughs> we got the new worker types. So these are the otters, here are the frogs. These are what the frogs look like. Ta-da! Froggy went according, he did ride. Crimbo! William McGinnis says, Black Orchestra is so amazing. It is a great game. It is really good. Uh, it is not easy. So when you finally do assassinate Hitler, it's usually uh, because you really lucked out and you really worked hard at it. So Flaming Huron said, oh, I'm sorry, Kabuki Kid said, Everdell, the game everyone seems to call Everdale. I have not heard people refer to it as Everdale. Oh, I'm sure they do. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not questioning that. Okay, so those are the frogs see what else we got here so we've got here's the starlings there we go so those are the starling workers these are the exact which i think these are supposed to be like little dinosaurs they kind of look like little dinosaurs and the platypi so there we go so we've got those so, and uh, in the new colors as well. So that's kind of cool. So we've got uh, new options as far as the, uh, the workers. So you can change up the workers from the core game. All right, so I'm just gonna put some of this stuff back and we will look at some of these cards. Put the frogs back in here. Here are the pearls, and I do notice, and this was another thing, like I said, I had like really, really minor uh, dings 
on Everdell, and it was the fact that uh, the little berries were round, so they'd roll around all over the place, and the logs were also round, so they would roll all, all over the place. Well, I know they, they've taken care of, they've got new logs now that don't do that. Now I see the pearls here are flattened on the bottom so that they won't roll all over on the game table or on the game board too. So that's cool, I, I appreciate that. So let's see what we've got. So we have, so we got these little cards here which are about the same size as the um, like like special events that you can play for where it's like uh, if you have this this you can claim this by putting a worker there but these are these are new so I think these are what, what were they called in the rule book adornments I think these are adornments so we got compass, gilded book, hourglass, tiara, sundial, key to the city. <laughs> I got the key to the city. Bell, mask, and then here we go. There we go. That's a an evening of fireworks. So this is another one of those special events that you can earn. So if you have the lookout and the minor mole, you can you can put a worker here. You can claim this special effect. So what do we got over here? We got another pack of these. Smaller cards. Well, it looks like we got a few different things. So we got another. So we got mirror, scales, spyglass, sea glass amulet. So those all go into this deck. Yep. So that's this is new. This is something new added to the game so that's cool then we've got some new uh events so masquerade invitations river race riverside resort romantic cruise sunken treasure discovered x marks the spot then we've got some new options that go on the main board depending on how many players we have we get some unique uh worker placement areas that give you different stuff. So we've got four new ones here. A lot of new goodies in here. I like this so far. I like this quite a bit. So we've got that. Now, what I want to see, and as you can see, we've got the different backings on these. I want to see what's going on with the new creatures and new locales, the new buildings. Let's see what's going on with that. And of course, gonna have to resort to the old hobby knife because that little tab there is not working. This is a lot faster this way anyway. All right, let's see what we got cooking in chat. <laughs> Riverdale. Yes, it's the Archie game. So uh, we can either do it as like Archie Comics Archie or we could do it like... <laughs> CW TV show, right? All right, so make a splash. Okay, so here's one of the things that Starling Games does that I think is, is kind of cool. So you get a card. So there's a card like this in Everdell. There's a card like this that's also in Black Orchestra. So if you win, so like if you win Everdell or if you like kill Hitler in Black Orchestra, you take a selfie holding up this card and then you uh, you give it a hashtag. So it's pretty funny. So uh, at Starling Games, hashtag Everdell. So it says, make a splash, take a selfie with the other side of this card and share it with us. That all went swimmingly. I just came out on top playing Everdell Pearl Brook. Nice. I, get a, I think that's funny. I get a kick out of that. All right, so what do we got? All right, now wait a second here. How come these, how come these cards have very similar backings, but they are different? 
Can you tell? Can you see that? Can you see that? Whoops. Because I can, I can see the naked eye here that this is a little bit darker than this. But, you know, let me flip this over. They supposedly have the same backing. Let's see something here. Okay, so we've got it's a citizen. These are locations. So these locations actually go like that. Um, lengthwise, the locations in Everdell actually, the buildings that go this way. So, but uh, these are all supposed to be one deck. At least in Everdell, they are. In Everdell, the buildings and the characters are all the same deck. Maybe something's different here. So we've got Bosley the artist, Crustina the constable, Illuminor the inventor, Snout the explorer, Omicron the elder, and Gus the Gardener. Okay. And then the locations we've got. We've got the Great Hall. Gardens. Water Mill. Observatory. But you know what I, I don't see on these cards is if, if you play Everdell, you know that the the locate uh, the the creatures and the locations each have like a corresponding locale, right? So a creature has a corresponding locale and the locale has a corresponding creature. If you have that location and you have the availability of that the, the critter that goes with that location is out, it's available on, on the table, you can actually recruit them for free. It doesn't cost you anything to recruit it. But here I don't see that happening with these cards. So that's a little different. So I'll have to take a look at the rules. Like I said, you can see there's a bit of a difference with the backing color on these cards. So I'm hoping these are two different decks, but I have I have a sneaking suspicion. It's supposed to be the same deck. So that is a production error there. All right, so let's take a look at the other cards here. So this is what we're used to seeing. So as I was talking about, so we've got the bridge and then we have down here, it's indicating, okay, so the messenger. So if the messenger is out on the table that can be recruited and you already own the bridge, then you get to recruit them for free. So uh, one thing I really like about Everdell is that everybody's turn is going to be different because it's an engine building game. And if, uh, if you're not playing well, <coughs> you can play through a season really fast and the other players are still doing stuff while you're done and you're just sitting there like, great. So that's something I really, really like. So what you're, when you're playing Everdell, you're really trying to stretch out your turn to do as much as you possibly can. So we got a couple of bridges. We got a new ferry. And it's the fairy ferret is the creature that goes with this. So these are common. Those are pretty common. We've got a harbor and the shipwright goes with that. We've got a couple of those. We've got a pirate ship and the pirate goes with that. We got three of those. There we go. Now we got the messenger. Looks like a little gecko, a little lizard. There's our fairy ferret. There's our shipwright. There's our pirate, who is a platypus. <laughs> the platypus pirate. Yes, and Kabuki Kid says, yes, definitely nice art. Bone says, art looks great in this game. Never played it, though. I really recommend it. I really, really do recommend it. Uh, it looks... It looks like it's a much um, more family-friendly game than it is. There is some take that to the game itself. I mean, especially it's worker placement. So you're placing workers in areas and you're, you know, 
you're blocking off other players from being able to do stuff that you know they need to do. Uh, and that doesn't, uh, sometimes it ticks people off at the table. There's a lot cooking to Everdell. Uh, something I really, really enjoy. It is out of print at the moment, I do believe. I think it's finally making it back into stores uh, right now because they're doing their, their fulfillment for the Kickstarters uh, because Pearl Brook was part of the, the Kickstarter, but they also were doing a new print run of Everdell as well. So I definitely, def definitely recommend it. It does have a higher price point, I do want to point out. The price point on it, um, I want to say, if I remember correctly, the collector's edition, which is what I've got, the uh, the price point to it is, I think it's eighty, might be eighty dollars, could be a hundred. I'm trying to remember, uh, but I will point out there is loads and loads of replayability in the game. Simply, even the way the the board stacks up, because uh, like these. These little cards here that give you different actions. These are always random every game, and there's quite a few of those. So you won't even have the same actions available to you for your workers to be placed on in every game. Every game is going to be different. So that went swimmingly. We'll put those cards in there. Um, that's kind of wild how this is laid out. It's like, uh, I'm not sure what goes, supposed to go where. So I'm just going to kind of do this. Because everything will end up fitting in here. So there's the uh, score pad. We've got these. We've got the new sideboard that goes with that. We've got the 3D um, Wonders which I am going to take a wild stab that I will end up putting those together and then uh, putting them off on the side so I don't have to take them apart constantly. And then we got the short little rule book for the collector's edition of Everdell's Pearl Brook, the first expansion for <laughs> one of my favorite games. Uh, actually, in the last few years. I mean, it was my favorite game from... Uh, from last year. It's my favorite board game from 2018. And it is one of my favorite games over the past few years. Yes, Bones is like, ouch, high price. Tell you what, you got a couple of minutes here. I usually like to try to get the show about an hour long. Let's take a look. Do 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 do. Shopping for Everdell. Well, I see a lot of Pearlbrook. <laughs> so, uh huh. Okay, so that's not good there. Let's take a look. Take a look at the Kickstarter page. Standard edition. Well, uh, that price isn't right anymore. Let's take a look. See what Amazon says. Oh, hey, you could get it for $110. Uh, huh. So, uh, like I said, I don't believe that, um, that the latest print run has hit yet, has hit stores. Almost positive they had them at Gen Con. But uh, I only talked to Brenna for a little bit at Gen Con, and uh, she gave me the review copies of stuff. But uh, I think you can get the standard edition of Everdell for like 55 or 60 so and there's not there's not that huge a difference uh there's just some extra goodies in the collector's edition which I mean they're very cool but still the standard edition is great too so at that price point let's say maybe you can get it online once it's back in stock for about 50 bucks definitely uh definitely grab it unfortunately bone says they're in the UK so yeah, you're going to add quite a bit to that price. All right, so that is it for tonight's show. On Monday's show, I will be unboxing and taking a first look at Roll for Adventure from Cosmos Games. So that is what we will be taking a peek at. So as I like to point out, first of all, 
Don't forget, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you like the channel, please subscribe. I find it funny that uh, there'll be a certain amount of people watching live because I can see how many people watch live and some people watch live all the time and never give the videos a thumbs up. It's kind of like, really? I mean, do you not like the show, but you watch it all the time? Kind of weird. Anyway, I was gonna say, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And of course, if you like the channel, please subscribe. Don't forget, ring that little bell because it will not only tell you when a new video gets uploaded, it'll also tell you within about five minutes that when the stream goes live. So as I like to always point out, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, please visit thegaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news, reviews, comics, movies, TV. By now you know the drill. Get your geek out at thegaminggang.com. Uh, the Man Man says that uh, Everdell was just under $50 at uh, CSI, and it's out of stock. It's out of stock everywhere. Uh, unless you're going to the secondary market, then you're going to pay way, way more than you should. It's a great game. It's really, really fun. $120. <laughs> anyway, all right. So I will be back on Monday. Everybody who hung out watching live and chatting away, thank you very much for keeping company with me. Also, those of you who watched live, and I see there are some people watching live who were not in chat. How come? We don't bite, jump in, say hello. And of course, I love everybody who watches the show, regardless if you watch it live or on Memorex. So, as I mentioned, I will be back on Monday. So until then, happy trails. Thanks again for watching The Daily Dope, presented by The Gaming Gang. If you liked this episode, be sure to give it a quick thumbs up. And if you dig the channel, please subscribe. If you'd like to check out our previous episode, click right here. And if you want to check out a somewhat randomly selected episode, give a click right down here. It'll be like opening a box of Cracker Jacks. You just don't know what you'll get. Once again... Thanks for watching, and I'm Jeff McAleer.